Just, <laughs> just go. <laughs> right, we're here with um, my colleagues Mike and Mike to talk about ESP.NET MVC. And I'm keen to find out how it works, but other things like where do I get it from, its status, um, what else we've got to find out, Mike? I guess, yeah, how do I, how do I get it, what's its status, what does it do for me? And we know web forms, but we don't know MVC. If you know web forms, that's a pretty good starting point. So you know the underlying ASP.NET platform. Really, ASP.NET MVC is just a different way to build ASP.NET applications on the same underlying ASP.NET platform. So web forms is here and it's around to stay, it's not going anywhere. MVC just joins it as a new friend and an alternative way of building ASP.NET applications. It's released, it was released on um, day one of the Mix conference, which was March sometime around then. And it's fully supported and you can go and get it by going to the uh, ASP.NET site, so www.asp.net. There's an MVC link and then there's a download link on that page. So it's not, it doesn't ship currently as part of um, Visual Studio or .NET Framework, um, it's an out-of-band release and someday I guess it will make its way into the .NET Framework, whether that's in .NET Framework 4 or not. Okay, so if I was building an application, with, say I'm building a page with web forms and I want to do, maybe it's like an estate agency or something like that, I would display a list of houses and I kind of have an idea in my head as to how I would do that with ASP.NET Web Forms. I'd perhaps draw it up on the board. What does that idea look like? This idea looks exactly like this. So let's say I was going to build something with uh, Web Forms. I got some kind of HTTP request comes in. So, you know, in we come on HTTP. And there's probably something in the, in the URI that says what it is I'm trying to get. But let's say some list of houses, maybe some flats in Reading or something like that. And so ASP.NET is going to spin up my page, which will have a big P on it for page. And if I'm going to get a grid or something, a table back of data, then ASP.NET Web Forms is nice because it has some kind of control that represents a grid. I'll put a big G on it for a grid. And this control encapsulates what complicated HTML you have to spit out in order to generate a table, whether it be an HTML table or whether it be a sort of CSS based thing. And so in here, what this does is it encapsulates all the logic to spit out HTML and maybe JavaScript these days in order to build up a, a collective response and send that back down to the client. So I kind of get how that works and what this control is doing for me. If I was doing something like that with ASP.NET MVC, would it look very different? How would that look? Um, right. There's more rubber. Let's. Um going to get rid of this. I'll leave your request up there because it's beautifully drawn. So MVC is an implementation of the model view controller pattern. So you'd expect to see a model view controller in my diagram somewhere. So let's get them in there. Oops, instead of starting the thermal. This is my controller. Let's have model. And over here we'll have a view or more than likely a set of views of some, uh, of some type. Now the first thing you'll notice that is uh, different is you get a nice clean URL in ASP.NET uh, MVC. And the reason for that is we've implemented something called ASP.NET routing that was built as part of the ASP.NET MVC project that has been factored out so you can use it in other places. But essentially, rather than a, a, a URL ending in, typically today you'll see ASPX, ASMX, etc. for um, ASP.NET pages and services, you get a nice clean URL that might say something like blah 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 blah, houses slash search slash I don't know, house number seven or something of that nature. No extension on the end. And essentially, what we're doing is we are passing information as part of the URL, so we've got things like a parameter here. And also we're specifying what controller we want to be invoked and what method we want to be invoked on that uh, controller. But we're getting into the details there. Essentially, this request comes to the controller. We disassemble this URL, figure out what we need to do, and typically we're going to make a query against our, our model to get some data back. So we get a lot of data, and then we hand off that data to the view. The view knows how to render that data on the, on the page. So this is kind of the closest parallel to the box you draw, I suppose. Uh, but the view understands how to render that stuff back down in, uh, in HTML and hands it back, and ultimately what we get is an HTML document with all our houses on it. So I get that, and I, I see that conceptually that's a little bit different from what we do with web forms. Where do you see that this is, I guess, stronger than web forms, and where do you see that this is kind of weaker than web forms? I guess it's not an either-or situation here. Depending on the application, depending on your skill set, depending on your bent, then these different approaches are going to appeal to you. The key difference is with ASP.NET MVC. I guess you can break down, we've already mentioned one of them, so you get these nice clean URLs. Uh, to be fair, you'll be able to do that in web forms in ESP.NET 4. You can do a bit of work in, in web forms today. But that's one immediate benefit of these nice URLs. The other uh, benefit of Spring Spine 2, Spring Spine Test Room Development, and nice, this is going to be difficult for me to write this neatly. Nice clean HTML or controller HTML. So Test Room Development, it is very easy, very easy is strong, it's relatively easy to build unit tests to test the individual components of an ASP.NET MVC application. 
it is relatively difficult to build unit tests that uh, test the ASP.NET Web Forms application. So the ease with which you can uh, execute on test-driven develop or just comprehensively unit test your application much easier in ASP.NET MVC than it is in ASP.NET Web Forms. Um, this is a double-edged sword, the clean HTML or total control over your HTML. This view here, over here, essentially you're building up the raw HTML that's going to render your uh, page for you. So rather than having a nice grid control as you had in your uh, web forms page, I'm afraid you don't get anything quite as um, helpful as, as that in MVC. You get a few methods that help you build um, if you're doing something such as extracting data from the URL, etc., you get some methods that help you build up simple HTML elements, but ultimately all you're doing is rendering simple HTML elements. And you'll find yourself writing looping constructs in here with uh, you know, a, a table outside and table rows inside and iterating over your data model and building up a, a table in plain old HTML. Uh, that means you have total control, you can make very easily make sure your HTML is nice and clean, but it's a bunch more work in order to, to do that because you don't have that same control model that you have in web forms. So, so is that kind of my primary downside? Is it that I lose, I guess I have to learn some stuff, I have to learn a bit about MVC, and then I, I lose some productivity? Is that the primary downside of, of MVC? Whether you lose productivity or not is, again, is a, a matter of debate. There are those that would argue that depending on your application, this is actually a more productive way. If you're building a, a, a complex, say we were building an estate, a real estate agent's site and it was you know, handling a, a, you had a seriously large number of views, multiple models potentially, um, you could argue that actually the ability to unit test this the control you have over the uh, HTML and the fact that essentially MVC is surfacing to you the real world web model is a benefit from a productivity perspective, one could argue. The web forms model is an abstraction on top of the real, what, ha what actually happens underneath in the, uh, the HTTP request model and the controls are an abstraction on top of HTML. Now that's great provided you stay within a certain set of boundaries in the web forms world. The trouble is, when you start to build real-world, large sites, there are times when you stray outside of those boundaries. But once that abstraction fails to work, you really need to understand what's going on inside web forms, and you really need to understand a bit about the, uh, the, the, the web model in order to make things work and to get things back on track. So, it's not easy to give a simple answer to say whether this is more productive. It appeals in these areas. It's potentially more productive in some scenarios, less productive in others. Certainly if you're doing a very simple site, you're going to spend more time building an MVC than you would in web forms. Can we mix these things together? So if, if for instance, um, part of my website was, you know, I needed some complex charts and I'd identified some third party controls that did some great charting, but they were web forms controls. Could I make some of my site using web forms? You, you can, yes. I mean, the, the, it, it underlying um, ASP.NET MVC is just the ASP.NET platform. So one of the nice things about uh, ASP.NET MVC is you get things like the, um, the the membership model, you get things like the caching model that comes with ASP.NET, and actually they're pretty easy to use in uh, ASP.NET MVC. There's nothing stopping you rendering. Um, ASP.NET pages as part of that site. It's, I would argue it's frowned upon in the ASP.NET MVC world that you suddenly step outside of this model and just start rendering things um, without having any uh, control there in the loop of it. Thanks for that, Mike. So that seems like there's a lot to learn about ASP.NET MVC, so how would you recommend we find out some more? Well, if you go to the ASP.NET site, so just www.asp.net, there's an MVC section on that site, and on there there's a bunch of screencasts, there's links to the download, and actually if you go on to, I don't know where it's on that site, but if you go to Scott Guthrie's blog, there's a chapter, a free ebook essentially, that walks you through building uh, a simple ASP.NET MVC application, which is excellent, I recommend you do that as well.